Hallelujah. There it is. Praise be to God. Woohoo! How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. Awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. This is the night the Lord has made. We will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tuesday night training. Tuesday night training. Revelation night. Revelation night. Glory. Let's get a revelation. And then pass it on. Oh, yes. But if you don't take notes, how can you pass it on? Amen. Paper don't forget. You don't think God tests us in everything? Everything. He wants to know whether you're real or you're fake. Something that's come across my path and... It's similar to some of the things we've heard, but there's so much stuff going on. It's incredible. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Amen. Turn to Jeremiah 17. Glory. Jeremiah 17. What's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception and his power is fear. Yes. Verse 5. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Glory to God. Let's speak it together. Thus says the Lord, cursed. What's the opposite of curse? What's the opposite of blessed? You're on key tonight, praise God. <laughs> Curse is the man who what? Trust in who? Man. man. So who wants us to fall short of trusting God and trusting in man? That's right, the enemy. There's a, something that he uses that's called to be bewitched. But behind this bewitchment, it's what we call Demonic deception and projection. Demonic deception and projection. This is where the powers of darkness utilize something we call memory streaming. In this deception... There's a projection, in other words, there's a stream of influence where you're seeing things. Now, we have a perception, amen, of something that we perceive. Perception usually is associated with interpretation, amen? So if the interpretation is incorrect, we project something totally different. So the enemy uses deception to bring a projection, Curse is a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his what? Strength. That's a projection, you know that? Whose heart departs from the what? Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see. Hello? He shall not what? See. When good comes. Why? Because he's under control of deception, which brings projection. A different sight, a different vision. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. So what's going to happen? He's going to miss a lot of the things God is trying to do. 
But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. You know, many people say they trust in the Lord and their hope is in the Lord by their mouth, but their heart is not there. The heart doesn't trust. The heart's still trusting in self, abilities. The heart is not surrendered yet. It hasn't been broke. Because there's a lot of people that say things, but they really don't have the inwardness. And that's what God's trying to do. See, that's because there's a deception with a projection, but they can't fulfill. Is everybody okay? So blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a what? A tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not what? Fear, fear, when what? Heat comes, trouble comes. They won't run, they won't blame others. They'll stand firm and stay connected. But its leaf shall be green and will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought. Drought has to do with, associated with things of dependency. So when there's drought, people don't grow food and fruit and whatever. So people get freaky. They begin to fear. They become anxious. Did you ever buy something before you got the money? That's called anxious. One of the things the devil loves to do is get us in debt. Then we become a slave to debt. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. Verse 9. What does it say? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the thoughts or the mind, even to give every man according to his way, according to the fruit of his doing. A partridge that broods but does not hatch. So is he who gets riches but not by the right ways. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at his end, he will be a what? A fool. So we see that there's a choice of being blessed or cursed. God tests the hearts, the intentions. He tests everything, and he goes right through all of our reasoning, justification, compromise, amen, and selfishness. The word says God will not be mocked. Whatever man sows, he will reap. So nobody gets away with it, do they? Nobody. No one. And Malachi 2. What's the first office we're to fulfill? Priesthood. Amen. A priest is one who ministers to the Lord. Because if you can't minister to the Lord, you got no right ministering to nobody else. Hallelujah. Because you are not carrying the priestly garments then. Praise the Lord. Malachi chapter 2. So before you can become a king, you must become a priest. Amen? In verse 1. Is everybody there? Malachi chapter 2, verse 1. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, that means military, I will send a curse upon you. And I will curse your what? Blessings. And I will do what? Curse your blessings. How many of you all want your blessings cursed? Okay, then don't be anxious. It's real simple. Don't be anxious. Don't trust in yourself. Wait on God. Amen? Don't go in debt. I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you did not take it to what? Heart. Taking something to heart means you sought the Lord. And you waited for an answer. 
So you didn't move by assumption or what people call blind faith because that is assumption. Amen. Give glory to his name by obedience to his word of covenant. That's how we give glory to his name, by being what? Obedient. Obedient. There's no fear of God in these individuals when they go to this route of life. They've lost the fear. Not When you don't take something to heart from God, then there is no fear of God. And that means that there's a disconnect. There's no reverence, honor, and respect. And that's when your blessings become cursed. They'll turn against you. And anything that is cursed, the enemy has access to. That's how the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He brings a curse first. That's what he's promoting. That's what he uses bewitchment for. That's why he tries to deceive us. He gives us false projections, things that we see. In 2 Timothy 3, And projection. How many, where's the battlefield? In your mind, in your memory, in your thoughts. Oh, he knows how to play the game very well. Second Timothy 3, verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. But know this, what? That in the what? Last days, perilous times will come. We are in the last days. We are seeing perilous times come. There are people trying to leave other countries to come here. Christians are being so persecuted from other countries. Even in Europe. Europe is bad. People have no idea how bad it is in Europe. They go to all the beautiful places and whatever, but don't really know what's going on behind closed doors where people are trying to escape there. And they're being held there, refused visas, because they know truth of the things that are going on behind closed doors. And the government won't allow them to. Yes, last days. It's going to be intense influence, demonic deception and projection by accessing the thoughts and the minds of individuals. So there'll be perilous times. That's what it's about. What's perilous times? It's troubling times. Well, look, at trouble doesn't start without a thought. Amen. For men will be lovers of what? Here's the most dangerous thing, themselves. Amen? Amen. Lovers, well, here's the second most dangerous thing. Lovers of what? Money. Money is going to play a vital part in these last days. A vital. In fact, the word says that they will take the mark of the beast. Amen? Because they'll receive false promises. I mean, that's what we're hearing politicized now. Free education, free health care, free this, free that. Free prison. Free mark of the beast. Free hell. You have no idea what's going on. Lovers of money. So people be lovers of themselves, the first dangerous part. The second part is lovers of money. Money is going to influence individuals to be disobedient to God. Amen? They'll be boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. For this sort are those who creep into households and make all captives of gullible women and men, loaded down with sins, led away, various what? Lusts, overwhelming desires. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning. See, in the last days of this intense influence, demonic deception and projection, they'll be accessing the thoughts of minds 
There'll be false hope, false future projections of success and prosperity and fame. There'll be a false rest and peace because of an open agreement with the ways of the old man and worldly character. Now, memory streams are in this area where the enemy accesses us. We call those strongholds, which is a memory lie. But once something is touched, agreed upon, in the mind, the enemy has access. Now, you don't know that right off the bat. But he starts streaming deceptive thoughts to bring deceptive projections. Think about this. When we were drug addicts out there, because we had already touched unclean things, we had deception and false projection. Amen? We were being streamed by the enemy. Um, our thoughts were always wanting to use for false fulfillment. And we didn't have two nickels to rub together, but we talked about all kinds of wonderful things. Oh, I'm, big plans, man. You kidding me? As soon as I rob this bank, I'm good. As soon as I get enough dope, I can sell it and pay off all my debts. Never really seen the things that were going to affect you. Called consequences. See, this is how the enemy evades these things. In humans by these memory streaming, causing these projections so that we don't, we are ignorant, amen, to the consequences. We may know about them, but we're ignorant to them. I knew I could go back to jail, but I still did what I did. I knew I could overdose, but I still did what I did. Because I was under control now of demonic deception and projection. Even though I had false hope and false everything else. I was still under control. The veils were there. And there are many so-called believers that are still under control. And don't even realize why. Because they are touching unclean things that they call common. Is everybody okay? In this we see that the, the ways of the old man, worldly character, now memory streams of lies and worldly wisdom are taking individuals under control by this evil presence. In James chapter 3. through demonic memory streaming. Acts 5. Den demonic deception and projection. James 3. A murderer and a child molester is under this projection. They're able to ignore not only the consequences of themselves, but the consequences of the individuals they're hurting. Because of false projection. In James 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. 
This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. It is demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Self-seeking in the heart, promoting demonic wisdom with deception and projection through demonic memory streaming. Acts 5. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? This is intense right now. I mean, it's really full, like full blown out there, man. In verse 1, but a certain man named Ananias with his Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has what? Satan filled your heart or what? <laughs> why has he caused deception and what? Projection. Were they avoiding consequences? Yes. Why has Satan filled your heart to do what? Lie. To the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained, was it not your own? In other words, you had control of it. And after it was sold, was it still not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your what? Heart, justified, reasoned, compromised. You have not lied to men, but to who? God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breath. His last. Breathe his last. I'll tell you, if that was starting to happen now, there'd be a lot of people who would be doing the right thing. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things, and I believe it is coming. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now about three hours later, when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened, and Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look the feet of those who have buried your husband at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. The young men came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her, by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And I'm telling you, it was probably the greatest tithing week that there ever was. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> uh, people were bringing cash from everywhere, man. They were even going back because of all the times they robbed God already and going up and digging. Man, that's dead. Did you hear what happened? I'll tell you what, Wilma, you better go do something about this. <laughs> Anyways. Satan filled the heart to lie by memory streaming with deception and projection. Money became a replacement as an idol for Christ. Does everybody understand that? They avoided the consequences. Again, it's like an addictive mind. It avoids the consequences. Listen, to, what about, remember that guy Bernie uh, Madoff or whatever? Think, think about this. This guy had a Ponzi scheme going on for a long time. $65 billion Ponzi scheme. That would have been a good time. It's too bad he burned so many families and destroyed them. Well, he made some rich. 
but all those that became rich lost it too. So even the ones that made money on it, their money became, their blessings became what? Cursed. And they lost it all. $65 billion of years. Lavish living. Avoid the consequences. That's how the enemy operates. In Psalm 81, Psalm 81, <clears throat> verse 8. Let's speak it together. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you, O Israel, if you will listen to me, there shall be no foreign god among you. Amen? Nor shall you worship any foreign god. Now, can money become a foreign god? Can lust become a foreign god? Can a person become a foreign god? Can a vehicle become a foreign god? Can your home become a foreign god? Yes, anything, anything can become a foreign god to us if we allow it. And where there's a touch and agreement with it, then it becomes it because now the enemy is streaming. He's streaming us and not even realizing it. Now you're more concerned about keeping all of these other things instead of kingdom business. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 10, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt or out of bondage. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not heed my voice. They, they avoided conviction. They avoided all these. They reasoned. Even when conviction came, they shrugged it off. And Israel would have none of me. So listen, I gave them over to their own stubborn heart. So God allowed them to continue to proceed. But he knew that their blessings would become curses. He knew the end result is everything they put their money into and everything they put their labor into, everything they put their time into was going to come to an end. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their what? Own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That Israel would walk in my ways and I would soon subdue their what? Their enemies, the ones that are influencing them. And turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him. But their fate would endure forever. See, this is where the enemy comes in messes with the people's minds. They have a heart that wants to please God, but they're not willing to please God. Does that sound strange? <laughs> so God calls them pretenders. They would pretend submission to his will. But they're actually not. They're not obeying it. They're rejecting it. He said, but their fate would endure forever. In other words, nobody gets away with it. He would have fed them also from the finest of wheat. And with honey from the rock, I would have satisfied you. He, he said, no idols. Amen? No, no idols. <clears throat> this is where when we touch and agree with anything, that deception and projection of demonic influences blind and bring rebellion. It becomes a dangerous place to be in. 2 Corinthians 10. Now you got to understand that today's technology is influencing the majority of this. Technology is really influencing this. Music, videos, political, governmental, a lot of education, professors, men of so-called wisdom with been living in think tanks. They can't think of anything of God because everything they think of is worldly because they have worldly wisdom. <clears throat> 
all of this is becoming more and more active and more and more impressing. In verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh or in the world, we do not war according to the flesh or the world, physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. That's memory influence, isn't it? So, so many people aren't even recognizing this. They're not even taking the authority to cast it down. They're not even battling against it. Man, when you know, what, well, listen, we must live a life, and we just talked about an innocent walk, that everything we do should please God. We should not approve of anything that displeases God. Amen? We shouldn't approve of anything that displeases God. Everything you and I should do should be things that we approve that pleases God. And by pleasing God means you're walking exactly what the Word says. You're agreeing with the Word and you're going to promote what the Word says. Not what man says, not what emotions say. Not what money says, not what TV says, not what music says, not what law says. Everything is about what God says. Because if it isn't what God says, they're on the wrong road. The end result will be destructive. Amen? So he says our weapons are not physical, they're spiritual in pulling down these memories that the enemy streams us. He said, casting down arguments. See, there's an argument within our mind. Every decision you get ready to make, there'll be an argument. Every purchase you get ready to make, there'll be an argument. Every place you go, every, everything that you want to do or you're led to do by the Spirit, there'll be resistance. Does somebody get it? There will always be resistance, but you and I have the dominion and power and authority to overcome it. You'll be influenced by people, spouses, children, bosses, uh, heroes, worldly heroes. You'll be influenced by all of these things. The enemy will always say, don't you want to be like them? Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. And once you say, yeah, you just open the door and they're streaming you. You just got demonic internet. <laughs> Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when you're what? Oh, when your obedience is fulfilled. So no, no matter what domain name you change, they will have access. Amen? See, they're unable to cast down these arguments until the door of demonic deception and projection is closed and things are set right in order. 2 Thessalonians 2. Oh, happy days. Critical times right now. We're being tested and challenged. Tested and challenged. There's promotion and demotion going on. Verse 9. It says, The coming of the what? Lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Hello. And with all what? Unrighteous deception among those who are going to perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. That means submission to what God said. That they might be what? Saved, rescued, or have a way of escape. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Now, I want you to understand something. 
God allows a strong delusion to come. He just steps back. Because the enemy is forcing and promoting strong delusion on every single human. That's what he wants to do. That's what keeps them in, under control. Strong delusion. Now, a strong delusion is projection. Say it with me. Strong delusion is projection. And, of course, we know that it's a lie. You know, we can call it the scripture, all things are going to work to the good, but if you're touching the green, it ain't going to happen that way. Amen? And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be what? Condemned. Who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Unrighteous deception and projection is considered strong delusion. <clears throat> Remember, in this state of being, individuals avoid consequences. They ignore them, justify reason with them, because the enemy has control over them. 1 John chapter 5. Oh, yes. We are in perilous times. Things are happening. Turn the news on. You can see it all up there. They're all projection. I mean, they're all demonic deception and projection. You can see it. And they're trying to place these projections in the individuals. If they can get them deceived, they can project them. That's why you may talk to a lot of people and go, man, I don't get it. When people are saying Trump did this, Trump did that, or whatever, they're always blaming Trump, you know what I'm saying? But they're not looking at all the fruits of it. They can't see that. They're not even looking at it. They're not looking at anything. And then they're still saying that Obama's the one that brought all of the uh, prosperity today. When he only put the country double in debt than what it was. I'm not going to go there. Antichrist, son of anti-American, globalist, and servant of the devil. I guess they went there. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. <laughs> Glory. Verse 18. <laughs> we know that whoever is born of God doesn't sin, right? Amen. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him, deceive him. Does not touch him or deceive him. Why? Because you are in a place of a born-again state of being, walking as a new creation in Christ, submitting to all the ways of God and expressing his character. You are approving what God approves and you are disapproving what God disapproves. That keeps you in a position where the devil can't touch you. Amen? Amen? We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true and in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. 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 Anything that sways you. Anything. What happens here, one of the things that begin to happen is there's a loss of identity. Remember, the first thing the devil comes to steal is your identity. Boldness for righteousness begins to diminish. Then compromise of the truth, trust in Christ, and service to him. 
People miss their healing, miss their deliverance. They have to bless themselves because God can't bless them. I'm going to say it again. They have to bless themselves because God can't bless them. <laughs> Galatians 3. Oh, happy days. Galatians 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has what? Bewitched you. Who has sent you strong delusion? Who has deceived you? Demonic deception with demonic projection. Who has bewitched you? You thought you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith? Are you so foolish Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God because he approved what God approved and disapproved what God disapproved. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are of Abraham. Hmm. Only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And a scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing or following Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And that's your connection, isn't it? Many people begin in the spirit, but now they're being made perfect because they've been deceived according to the flesh. False satisfactions, false fulfillments. Cooperating, they have been taken captive and they're now cooperating with demonic deception and projection. And the old man of flesh, they've been bewitched. They've made, they're, they're now under mind control by the open door and they're now being memory strained by the voice of the stranger. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Oh, happy days. In verse 6, 1 Timothy 6, 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be what? Content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and the snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their what? Greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man, O oh woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, 
godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We see that there's a stray of faith because of lack of connection. Love of false hope, love of money through deception and projection. You know, it's amazing in how many people in this time and age right now, you know, you just walk into Walmart or, or, or Target and how many people are hovering over these ginormous TVs. I mean, it's like, and they're hovering all over all of this technology and they're drooling. And they're trying to get it financed. <laughs> it's like, wow. I mean, I used to be one of them years ago. I was a Mr. T, starter kit I used to wear. <laughs> they had the gold and everything, you know. <laughs> it was a Mr. T starter kit. <laughs> I didn't have the heavy chains, and I didn't believe in that stuff. I, I tried to stay undercover. I kept falling out of the car, though it didn't help. I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Hallelujah. First John chapter two. After I got saved, I didn't want any of that. Amen. Nothing. My wife had to basically drag me to a place to get a ring. I didn't want to wear no gold. I didn't want nothing. Anything that had to do with this world, I did not want. Anything that had to do with my past life, I did not want. Nothing. Although she was my past life. You know, so. <laughs> and that was questionable. <laughs> For both of us. And, you know, we prayed about it. All night long. <laughs> and God gave us a sign. And we submitted. In fact, we just had an anniversary that I just forgot. Oh, oh man, don't. I was the one that felt bad. <laughs> but I made up for it. And she was not angry at all. She was a very good girl. Thank God. Verse 15. <laughs> In fact, it was yesterday. How long have we been together? Add, add them up. Thirty-four years. Thirty-four years, and I'm still alive, and you're still alive. We're still alive, and it's still like the first day. <laughs> really, though, we have, you know. Praise God. Psalm 15. Do not love the world. First John chapter 2. I mean, uh, verse 15. And I got all corn for you still for a minute. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Like gold, silver, you know, things to that degree. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but those who do the will of God abide. In other words, those who approve of the things of God abide because they're disapproving the things that God disapproves also. Little children is the last hour and there's going to be a lot of influence. And you have heard that the Antichrist is coming even now. There are many Antichrists who have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were truly of us. But you have a what? An anointing. And you know, from, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know all things. Everyone say, I know all things. I know all things. Pertaining to things that God approves of and God disapproves of. That's what the anointing is, you know. It doesn't mean that you know the scriptures inside and out. Amen? It doesn't mean that you're going to remember all kinds of stuff of worldliness. What its main focus is, is not only do we have the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Amen? But we know all things that please God, and we know all things that displease God. And that's what keeps us in position so that the flow of the anointing, the presence of God can flow through us where we can walk in peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, expressing the character of Christ and having discernment when we know we're being influenced. Amen? So that we don't get disconnected and fall into deception and projection. Is everybody cool? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Lord, that you would add this to our arsenal of discernment, knowing the enemy's tactic in these last days to try and cause harm to your body. Lord, we ask for your mercies and grace to abound abundantly. And we repent for any area that we've come into agreement with these things. And ask, Lord, that you turn around <clears throat> so that we can get it right. And not to fall into this trap again. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>